one of our cash machines was cash machine. okay yeah yeah one of the cash machines on the campus was robbed okay robbed. like destroyed people took money out of it university students yes so uh my name is Rovimbo. um i went to northampton university but i'm best based in st albans right now and i took a fashion degree in okay northampton. so could you tell us about i can always so it's a it's a platform really to support university students especially i think my my target market is 19 to 24 year olds who are in uni um especially people who want to um who are christians who basically want to find themselves or find their identity um and also create a great foundation for their future so that's what that is okay so you said you you studied a fashion degree at northampton yes. why did you choose your course I was very creative. I really wanted to do fashion. And I think back when I was in school, I was getting really involved with a college nearby. I was doing modeling for them. And of course, when I was doing modeling for them, they would go through a process where they were, um, how can I explain it? So they would go through a process where they would do the um, trials, which is a prototype. And then I would see the process and it intrigued me and I wanted to know more. There was a girl who was on um, Britain's Next Top Model who uh, started mentoring me in terms of the modeling side, but I didn't feel like that's what I wanted to do. I really wanted to go into more the creative side because I enjoyed that. So that is kind of how my passion for that started to, well, to come across. So that's why I chose that because it was more aligned to where I felt I was going. Okay. So what did you think of your course? Do you want the truth? We want the truth want the and nothing truth? but the truth. <laughs> the bad okay, and the good. So it was it was a good course in the sense that it they really they really throw you in there. Like they tell you that the gap between A level and going to uni is a big gap. And you feel that you sense that. And I think that's exactly what I experienced. I mean, you know, I share this story and you've probably seen from my other channel is I, I actually failed my first year. Like I failed my first term of first year. And you know, there's this thing, this thing where people say, you can't fail first year, da, 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 da. but I did because the course was just so intense. I wasn't prepared mentally and that really affected me and I, it really challenged me to think, am I really as creative as I hoped I would be? Am I really as creative as I wanted to be? And um, apart from that, it was, you know, it's an, it's an art course. Your creativity is subjective. So what you think is creative, maybe your tutors don't. And also you have to, like one thing that I realized is, you know, your tutors are tutors for a reason. They are there because um, they will give you constructive criticism, but you have to also be critical in the advice that you take. So I think I was always discouraged if they didn't like something because I almost thought it defined me. Um, but overall the course was good. It was intense. It was expensive. I, I literally felt like, although I was working part-time, although there were scholarships they give you in certain areas, if you manage to get them, it wasn't enough. Like you always have to always have to, to buy things. So again, you have to be creative with your finances. So um, yeah, it was a good course, but it also had its challenging moments for sure. So you said, you mentioned you went from, did you, from sixth form to university? Yes. So yeah. what subjects did you study in sixth form? I did business studies, textiles, and um, English Lit. And did those subjects help you with your course? Definitely, yeah. Because <clears throat> the thing about, so in, it, with English Lit, it's really about storytelling. You're analysing a story. And that helped me when creating my collection because then I'm I'm really analyzing a story through art and um, the business side of things is the marketing side of things how are you going to market who is your target market when you're creating this collection you know what emotions is it supposed to evoke and how are you going to get people to really buy into what you're selling because if we're saying that um, creativity is subjective how do you get people to come along on your subjective journey because other people might like it. I mean, look at Kanye West, they, he got a lot of people 
you know a hate for his collection but that's his creativity yet it's making millions so it's, it's that element of it okay but how do you then go from being creative to being business minded minded and also telling a story through that so i think that's how those three subjects really helped me in my course okay and what do you think the best a levels slash subjects are for your course um sorry say that again what the are the best? best so you said you studied the business english lit and textiles were those the mm-hmm. best subjects to put you ahead of your course when you started or do you think there could have been other subjects that would have put you even further i think um if i did art that would have really really helped me because i think my weakest area in my course was doing illustrations um drawing um and stuff like that that really set me back um in A levels, they didn't really have um, CAD, so the so computer aided design. They didn't have that because you use a lot of, um, you know, Photoshop, Illustrator. You have to use those. Everything is now digital, so you really have to know how to use those. Because if you design something, you really want somebody in China, for example, to to make your product, but it has to be clear what you want digitally yeah so i think definitely if i had done art i think that maybe would have put me that step further that okay. step ahead so if we talk about the university you went to mm-hmm. what are the best and worst things about going to the university we'll start off with the worst well 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 <laughs> i had to sip on that before i get started um so <laughs> um the university I went to was uh, the worst part for me was the culture. As a black person, um, you know, you are prone to connect with other black people. But a lot of the black people that were coming to the university were coming from London, were coming from the like the gang life. If that makes sense. Okay. So just to give you, so they were coming from gang life. So you you were finding that there was like a lot of gang activity within the university. That was then giving a stigma on everybody else. So just to give you a little bit of an example, I um I have a friend who was telling me this is something that legit happened. Um, one of our cash machines was cash machine. Okay. Robbed. Yeah. Yeah. One of the cash machines on the campus was robbed. Okay. Well, like destroyed, people took money out of it, university students. And of course, when they got caught, they are black. Not to say that this is what us black people do, but it doesn't give us a good Good name. Yeah. Doesn't give us a good name. So that alone starts to kind of get people in their minds to start thinking, well, you're just a part of them. You start Mm. being stereotyped because of it. So that was the worst part. I know somebody as well who was kidnapped, um, legit. Like he was kidnapped and (laughs) the university had to investigate, police had to investigate. On another occasion as well, I remember coming from a party at the campus that, and this was a new campus as well, And of course, the people that could really, really afford to be in that campus, it was quite expensive, were people that were really doing for one, most of them were doing for one night. I'm not going to, like... Fraudulent activities. Yes. And not all of them, because I I lived there. I didn't do that. I just made a lot of sacrifices. I was just eating noodles instead. Um, But it was the only place that was left. So I just had to make do with what I had. But then I remember coming from a party one time, of course, you're a little bit intoxicated at this point. You're coming in, and all I see is dogs, police, like shields right in the entrance. Sorry, there's like a ambulance passing by. It's but, right. um, just at the entrance, me, I'm there thinking, act cool, act cool, act cool. Like, just don't, just don't draw attention to yourself. They didn't even look at me, nothing. I literally walked past them, but they were waiting for somebody. They were waiting for people that we constantly had, you know, police coming all the time. And it's like, I don't know. I just, I want to see black people do good. I like, I want to see my people do better. And for me, that was just always a little bit discouraging because um, then I was tied to it. But at the same time, it's like, how do we motivate each other to do better? 
Okay, so um, what were the uh, best things? <laughs> this is going to sound a little bit contradictory, but I think the best things was connecting and networking with people alike. So connecting with other black people or not just that, actually, because a lot of my friends were some of them were Sri Lankan, some of them um, were Bulgarian. So I did make so I wouldn't say just black people, I would say out other cultures was the best part for me because I started to network with these people some you know really smart people that I'm still in contact with now some people who have really helped me with some of the opportunities that I've had so those were the best part and even just um learning about yourself and learning who you are it was challenging at the time but I guess that is the best part when you look back at it of which it doesn't really feel like it at the time. But yeah, the best part was really just having that boarding school lifestyle. Cause I went to boarding school just before when I was younger. So it was like going back into boarding school, you you know, you, now you have a bit more money to spend. You can go out whatever time you like, there's no curfew. I think that experience of independence was the best part for me. Okay. So if we go into where the accommodation you were living, Obviously, mm-hmm. aside from obviously the uh, the gang activity, police. Let's talk about what it was like living there. So let's talk about the downsides of living at your accommodation. So you mentioned the price, and obviously the the individuals at the time that were there. Mm-hmm. Was there anything else? Um, the accommodation itself or the lifestyle. The, well, in general, so the accommodation and the lifestyle, it kind of in one, just living there, just so what was it like for you to live there? So if a student was coming to live in that accommodation, what can they expect? So, so I lived in an accommodation called St. John's and it was, um, it was heavily, it had just heavy security and the security was going up by the day. Um, you know, because of what I mentioned before. But that kind of made things tricky because now when you want to have visitors, people have to bring their ID to, or you you have to sign them in. And then it like, there was no real freedom. You felt like you were living in a, in some sort of like prison that you have to sign people in and out. And after a certain time, everybody has to go, which is fine because I get, you know, other students you know you've got nursing students that want to sleep and stuff like that you want to avoid that and there has to be certain rules but I think during the day it was difficult because then if you just want to have you know chill with a group of friends you're having to go downstairs sign them in all of this it could have been more efficient I think because I understand that certain things have to be in place but it was just too much it was just was not needed I don't think for it to be that strict and what are the best things about living at, at that accommodation? It was lit, like for the people that lived there, it was so lit. Like I just remember we'd always go into each other's houses, like at each other's flats, and we just play Bushman. I used to love whenever someone's playing music and I hear my, you know, my native music, so Zimbabwean music, and I would just hear that. I remember the first time I got there, I literally started to hear this music. I was like, yes, this is my place. I am right at home. Um, But it was lit. Like, we used to play games and, you know, it was just, it was a great place to live in the sense that you just get to connect with other people. It was multiracial as well. You get to connect with, you know, different cultures and you get to eat each other's food. Like, you know, just pop down the road, somebody's got some jollof, somebody's got some shaki, like, it was great. <laughs> and what do you think the best for uh, university accommodation is in the area? Well, would have been at the time? At the time, it was St. John's, for sure, because and... it was just a bit more modern. It was new, it had just been built when I went there, so everything was very, like, top-notch. Okay, so if we talk about the area, mm-hmm. would you say it was a, a a lot to do in the area a little to do with or was there like just you had your minimal stuff that just got you along through university I think shopping was very restricted but in terms of like lifestyle parties there was always something going on like where I lived it was five minutes walk away from all the clubs 
Um, it was, you know, um, close to all the campuses as well. Um, and there was a lot to do, definitely. There was always something. And if, if there wasn't something like, there's always a house party here and there. There's always a barbecue in summer. There's always, there's always something. Yeah, for sure. Did it have the usual shops or was it kind of just only local shops? So like, you know, the Primarks, the JDs, the McDonald's, Sainsbury's. So do you have everything every single area normally has or was it a bit restricted? Like you said, with the shopping. Um, so I mean, you you had you had all your retailers, so H and M, River Island, so forth. There, there is quite a lot there. Um, in terms of those retailers, you've got your well. I used to shop in Morrison's, so that was like because that was the closest. Um, there's a lot of Asda's there as well. So it's not limited as say, but it's just limited in what you find because it's a smaller town. So you know, for example, the, what you would get in H and M in Westfield is different to what you would get there. I think is what I meant. Okay so if we go into you said you were working while at university mm -hmm. what were you the current what was the job you were at at the time? I did all sorts so in my first year first week first year I remember going into a kebab shop and then I just joked around with the guy I was like yo are you looking for people to work here and then a week later I started working there um, I was just a receptionist, cash in hand. I did that for a little bit. Um, and then eventually I had to get something a bit more stable. So I was an ambassador with the university, um, zero hour contract. So I would, I would just literally first come first serve. You get to do open days. I really learned a lot about marketing, talking to people. I gained my confidence doing that. Um, and then when all else failed, I was just doing catering work. So I would again do zero hour shifts. Um, I would do catering work. I'd go to Cheltenham and do bar work. Um, sometimes, you know, serving people, Christmas events and stuff like that. So I think I know that also through the university, I would, I remember doing, um, being a receptionist at a place where I would always cover reception work. So there was always something to do, but on a zero hour contract basis. Okay. And while you were at university, did you join any societies? No. Is there a reason for that? I don't think it just was for me. Like, I'm not really, I don't know, it wasn't for me. I never found one that I really fit in. I considered ACS, but, uh, yeah, no. That's fine. I didn't really have a good reason, to be honest. It just wasn't you. That's fine. And can you tell us about Freshers? <laughs> um... I didn't do freshers like everybody else again. Like I didn't really do something every night like people did. My freshers was a little bit different because the circle that I was in, they did freshers a little bit different as well. So our, our freshers was very much like you go into the, um, you there was like house parties that we were doing. There was a lot of like, like, you know, wandering eyes happening, like scoping, you know, like especially if you're especially if you're single even if you're not single for some people but um like it was just yeah it was it was an interesting experience like I didn't yeah like I said I didn't do I feel like I'm repeating myself I didn't do freshers like everybody else but I did my freshers differently okay. it was a freshers but it was different yeah so can you tell us now more about I can always Yes. So what do you want to know? If you give us so like kind of why you started, what it is, what your objective is, who wants to get involved and just 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 tell us. OK, so I started I Can Always in 2016 and I was finding that I was seeing a lot of men, especially well, not men, but like, yeah, men, because they were maybe two years older than me. So 23, 24 year old men driving an Audi, driving, you know, in really high positions at work. And I didn't quite understand why I couldn't see other women doing that. So I really was on this pursuit to understand why, because I had a lot of male friends that were always telling me about what they were doing, all these business ideas that they had. And me being entrepreneurial as well, I was like trying to have similar conversations with other women but I could never really get same back. And so I was just on this pursuit. And so I started it off as an Instagram account where I was just 
posting quotes, but then I then went through an experience that was really, really challenging where um, I got pregnant and I, um, two days later after finding out I was pregnant, I hadn't really made an official decision of what I was gonna do. I started having an, a miscarriage. And during that miscarriage, um, I basically, the relationship that was in, you know, the guy wasn't at uni, he was already in his career. It put a wedge on our relationship because it was a fairly new relationship as well. And that started to kind of just really put a wedge on things. And whilst I was doing that, I was on my way, I was getting ready to go to an internship in Paris of which it was like, what? So when I went there, I really, started to see life a bit more like okay this just happened okay I've just gone through a miscarriage I need to do more I had to really think about doing more people I was doing the internship really encouraged me to start doing YouTube and so forth so when I came back you know my mom had just bought me a camera for Christmas because it's something I wanted and so I was like okay let's do it we'll figure it out as we go so I started making YouTube channels I was like revamping myself I didn't want to be a YouTuber I wanted to inspire people so I started doing one minute videos of affirmation because it's what I needed it's what I needed to hear it's the words that I wanted to tell myself when I was in a moment where I was depressed where I felt lonely where I felt alone so um, I really just started to to do that I started getting a lot of great responses people were sharing it and um I hit a crush because, you know, at this time I had just been accepted by um, Apple News to put my articles on there. And then I had like eight or nine volunteers that were going on the platform, writing their stories, sharing their stories. And then I hit a crush because now when I look back at it, I was out of, out of doing I Can Always for about a year, let, you know, a lot of people down and I had to really dig deep I wasn't healthy within myself I was trying to motivate other people out of my own brokenness and I could never really do it so I had to go through a journey of healing and I had to do that through God I really had to seek God and ask God you know who am I what is my purpose what do you want for this platform anytime I tried to pick it back up it never seemed to be working until I, I dug deep and I said God like what do you want for this platform because it's not for me it's you so almost so to speak so of course I don't know if you're Christian or if anybody listening is Christian but that's kind of the journey that I went through on in an authentic sense and the more I started to see God the more it really started to make sense that I wanted to inspire young people especially university students to say hey like you know university is not an easy journey it's not an easy road but there is something out of this I started to see how after my university journey my career went from zero to a hundred real quick. You know, I've only graduated. I've only been out of uni for two years. I've changed my job three times. My salary has gone up three times as well. Um, and I'm in a senior position that I never thought I would have at 24. So if I can do it, then so can somebody else. And that's the whole idea of I can always to let you know that I don't come from a place where, yeah, I'm just suddenly successful, but I come from a place where I've been in the gutters. I graduated with a 2-2, but now I manage a portfolio of five different brands, you know, brands that you see in your in your supermarket every day. I manage like the social media platforms for those. So it's like you cannot you can make it regardless of what your challenges are, regardless of where you've been. I've been through it as well. And I just wanted to to inspire the people. Okay. Sounds very nice. And obviously, so if uh what if who would you say the perfect student would be for you then because obviously you mentioned that you saw more men than women are we saying a girl a woman that is interested in maybe accepting the accepting that uh god into their life and wants to kind of get past the initial um hardship of going from university into adult life would that be the perfect because obviously this is open to everyone and anyone yeah. but who is yeah. like the main who's like the, the objective target you, exactly you want to get at um i would definitely say that i don't throw god in people's faces but it is something that i you know it, it is a relationship that i have but it is in also the core foundation but i don't ask people to believe in god to come to me i don't ask be people to believe i just say believe my story and my journey if you want to know more about god then sure i'm happy to have that conversation but i won't hide the fact that god is in my life if that makes sense but i think for me really it's 
young women, 19 to 24, even older, even younger, you know, but I think my main focus, I almost have to have that narrow um, to, to, to be able, because that's an area where I relate the most. People who are thinking, I feel really, really frustrated. Why am I always procrastinating? Why am I always finding failing, you know, I'm fading in relationships. Why am I always finding that, you know, I've tried X, Y, Z, it's never really worked out. Um, you know, I'm having issues with my family members. I'm, I feel like an outsider. I'm struggling to build friendships, genuine friendships, and they feel stuck in this area, constantly demotivated. And I just think that is the person that I want to come to me. That is the person that is saying, you know what, I understand I'm going through this, but I know there's more for me. And even if you don't believe there is more for you in that particular moment, I'm here to kind of show you, hey, there is. It's just about taking it one step at a time. Okay. So <clears throat> obviously we've had to add this conversation over Zoom due to us not being able to meet in person mm -hmm. due to COVID-19. So yes. how are you? Oh, sorry, before you say, before right. you ask that, can I just can I just quickly add to that because I feel like I missed a big chunk of that. That's all right. Go ahead. So I just want to quickly say as well that um added to the person that should come to me it's really about someone who wants to kickstart or set a good foundation for their future i don't just say okay you will give you emotional healing or whatever it is and it's not something i'm asking people to pay for just come and be part of the community um it's genuinely just if you want to kickstart your career and you want to be an entrepreneur if you want to be in a senior position in where, where you are then come through i've got a lot of tips and tricks i've got a lot of things that are happening that um could hopefully give the information to somebody who wants to start their own business or wants to be in a senior position in at quite young okay so if we just before so, we get into the COVID bit let me just um ask the question that i um forgot to answer obviously you you went to university um meaning you chose it over an apprenticeship slash going right into work so right. why did you make that choice I think that choice was really influenced by um, feeling there was no other option for fashion. There was no apprenticeship. So in your life. Oh, so about the core story. Yeah. Okay. So it was it was there was no other option at the time to do fashion and a fashion apprenticeship. So the only choice I had was university. Okay. So as going in before, we can't have the conversation because of COVID nineteen in person. So yeah. how are you holding up during COVID nineteen? I've loved it. Like, okay, I've loved being at home. Of course, I've not loved the fear that's going on outside. That has been really said to us. That has been really, um, you know, I think about it a lot. I talk about it a lot in terms of what's really going on outside and thinking of how can we actually comfort people in this moment. Um, something that I've been supporting the church that I go to to see how can we start providing to the people that, you know, are struggling in this moment. But being in lockdown, I've loved it. I've loved it so much because I've never been as productive as I, you know, I've I've been since I've been in lockdown. Like my my day starts at eight thirty to five thirty. I'm doing my day job, and then from six thirty to eleven thirty, I'm working on my businesses. So it's like I've actually had the time where I've cut down my traveling time, you know, because now I don't have the frustration of having to wake up super early to get to work or or even though my work is like a five minute walk, but it still takes away that whole idea of getting up and, and, and like having to feel like you have to prepare your lunch and so forth. I cook during my lunch now because I can, I'm, I'm right in, you know, the kitchen is just down the road. So it's like, now I definitely feel like I have been more productive than I've ever been. I've definitely, you know, uh, healed from a lot of things it's been challenging in the sense like I've just been going through a lot of healing I did counseling at the well I was doing counseling before the lockdown but I was still continuing with, with my counseling as I was in lockdown but that was helping me because I was able to just not feel the pressure of going to meet with people and just really be um, self-analyzing and self-auditing as to remember where are you where are you going what like, does life look at look like what areas do you still need to work on and just seek god in those areas okay and has covid19 affected your life drastically no so you've been on the okay side of everything okay yes, yeah 
Okay, so um, again, I'm Ravimbo. I studied fashion. Um, I studied fashion at Northampton University, and um, I definitely went through a difficult journey. I definitely went through my ups and downs. I failed a year. I stayed an extra year than I was supposed to. I graduated with a tutu, and I think, you know, from that was the birth of this platform. Was the birth, you know, of my career because it really put me in a position where. I actually gave myself, um, I actually said, you know what, I'm going to uh, build up strength in one area. A lot of the times we don't, we don't do great in one area, but it's then, okay, where are my strengths? How can I maximize on those? Because a lot of the times you can always learn your weak, you know, areas of your weaknesses, but we tend to dwell too much on our areas of weaknesses that we neglect our strengths so I think that's really has been the you know the birth of I can always the idea that if I can I'm just an average Joe like I'm just here you know living in St Albans I'm not anybody famous but I am creating change one day at a time and I'm giving myself grace as well because not every day is great I've had a really difficult challenging week this week you know, things have not been great at work, but then I've not let that define where I'm going. It's okay. I see my struggles as opportunities of growth. And that's what I want to share with other people. If I can do it that way, then so can you. We can all create change together in one way or another. And I've actually, uh, I will actually be launching a new project on Monday, on the 1st of June, which is called Together We Can Create Change, where I've interviewed 30 under 30 young people, successful people, some of the top ranked LinkedIn people on, um, yeah, top ranked on LinkedIn in sales, um, you know, entrepreneurs, people that, you know, there's a guy that launched um, a hotel review business in, Niger in Nigeria, but now it's all over Africa. So all these people are sharing their stories from their university journey, to them starting their career and their tips and tricks of how they did it because one my story is just one story but when you've got all these stories i think it's definitely going to change other people's lives so yeah that's just, that's just to mention by the time this video comes out that will be already out so where can they find it yes so um my website www.icanalways.co.uk and then um my instagram and Facebook, which is I can underscore always, and then my Twitter, which is I can underscore always TV. Um, and yeah, that's where you can find me. I can always. Well, okay. it's usually I can underscore always. Okay. <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'm plugged in. Amazing.